YouTube, it's your boy Ziggy Doom, another podcast. This one is kind of not um, uplifting and upbeat, but it is something I want to address. Ironically, I actually was going to talk about this podcast um, before the incidents happened. Uh, we just had a mass shooting in Texas at a school. I'm sure everybody heard about it, so we ain't got to get into the, the details of it, but it it actually goes into what I was going to talk about in one of my, my future podcasts. And I couldn't get y'all the podcast last week because of scheduling conflicts and stuff. So I'm going to just bring it to y'all now. I feel it's probably very relevant now. Now with the school shooting, it was very, very unfortunate. And as with all shootings this in this manner, the topics, the same topics seem to come up. Um, you have the... The people on the left saying more gun control, and you have the people on the right saying mental illness. My take on it is is this: I don't I don't think we should take all of these mass shootings and put the the offenders in one group, right? I don't I don't think we should do that because we don't really know all of the motives behind why each individual did it. So for me, I think we should address each situation individually. What was each person's motive? Now, I, I really don't like when we take situations like this and, and make it political. People lost their lives. Families lost their children, their loved ones. People's lives are gonna be changed forever. And for for our politicians and our people in power to to politicize it and and use it as some form of, of leverage for their campaign or, or, or lobbyists or whatever, that's just ridiculous. You know, when you're on the left and you say more gun control, well, the, tr the, the problem with that is you can have as much gun control as possible, but if someone really wants a gun, they will get a gun. You can, you, you, there's no real way around that. If someone wants a gun, they, they will get a gun. Drugs are illegal and people still do drugs. So more gun control may not be the definitive answer. And with the people on the right who, who blame mental illness, well, here's my take on that. I think in one way, shape, or form, we all have a bit of mental illness. Maybe not diagnosed, maybe not recognized by a, a surgeon or not a surgeon, but, you know, a doctor or a physician or whatever, psychologist. But I think we all have some form of mental illness. We all go through things that we may not acknowledge or we may disregard. But that doesn't mean we, we don't have some form of mental illness. We all have our, our traumas, man. We all have our vices. And just because it's not diagnosed doesn't mean it's not there. You know, men... Especially because we're taught to suppress our feelings. We're taught to be tough and men can't get emotional. Men can't cry. Men can't get depressed. So so if we're taught that, what do we do? We, we tend to hide those. You know, we tend to mask it or pretend like it doesn't exist. And that's just not right. That kind of stuff can contribute to mental illness. So to blame it on all on mental illness, I don't think that that's accurate neither. We have to try and find... Take each individual circumstance and, and prod into it and figure out why that person did what they did. I, I, I can't, I, I personally can't blame it all on gun control, nor can I blame it all on mental illness. Every, every circumstance is, is different. They're all tragic. They're all equally tragic, right? But the, the, the motives behind the shootings all, you know, while they probably share similarities, they all aren't the exact same thing. They, they, they can't be. I just, you know, and when we can get away from politicizing these, these circumstances, maybe we can focus more on trying to figure out how they happen because it all starts from the home. It starts from the home. All of these people that did these things, they had a home. They were raised and taught a certain thing. So maybe if we can dig deeper into that, into how they were raised and, and what they were taught, maybe we can use that and apply it to the way we raise our children and hopefully not bring them out into the world to where they feel that way. 
And even with all that being said, we still won't be able to get away from all of these kind of tragedies. It, you, you just can't. This isn't a perfect world. No one has all the answers. No one has all the solutions. But if we put our heads together, instead of just having one side versus the other, then maybe we can do a better job of, of assessing these, these situations and how we can prevent them from happening further individually, right? Gun control, that puts the, the responsibility on someone else. Hey, stores should have more gun control so kids can't go and buy guns. Well, maybe if you teach your kids about guns and the dangers that come with them, maybe they won't be more inclined to get a gun. Well, mental illness is, is affecting a lot of people and, and that's probably why they did it. Well, let's try to understand the mental illness that they may have so we can properly diagnose and address it. Let's not put that on the back burner. Those are my those are my 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 solutions, you know. There is no one perfect answer. There's no one definitive solution. But there are better ways we can prevent these things from happening in the future. That's just my take on it. Now, with that I'm going to segue into what I was going to talk about on my podcast anyway. And that is it's inconvenient, but it it everyone it happens to everyone. I want to talk about death and what happens after we die. You know, we all love our kids, we all love our families. You know, we you know everyone loves their their children and, and relatives. You know, everyone has a loved one. Okay, so when you when you die, unfortunately, it comes at a cost. Right. So there's expenses that come with debt. You have to have funeral expenses. You have, you know, debts that you owe when you are alive. These things have to be paid for. Well, what can you do to ensure that your death doesn't become a burden to your loved ones? Now, some of us have life insurance. Right. Some of us have um, a funeral, you know. Our funeral's covered and everything, and that's good. And I know this sounds like I'm trying to solicit something to y'all, but I'm not. I would never in my life solicit a product to anybody. I'm just making a point. And hopefully you guys can hear me and come up with something, come up with your own conclusion. So when we die, do we want to leave our loved ones dead? Do we want to leave them that? I don't think we, we do. So how can we... What can we do better to ensure that when we pass on, we're not leaving our, our, our families with debts? You know, and that's when, when I think everyone should look into um, life insurances. But aside from that, you know, kind of set something aside, have something set aside for when you do die so your funeral expenses are covered. You know, GoFundMe is a is a is a useful tool that a lot of people use and and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it when when the GoFund is for someone's, you know, unexpected death, then it 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 kind of and this is just my opinion, it kind of seems like that was bad planning on that person's behalf to where they have to use the GoFundMe to pay for their funeral. And once again, this is not something that's comfortable. It's not convenient. I don't really talk to get everyone's approval. I, I, I have to bring up things that are uncomfortable and may trigger some people. But that's just, that's who I am, right? I, I don't I don't just talk about the fun, cowardly things. We got to address real life too. We're all going to die. But what are we leaving our families when we die? We, really, we say we love our kids. Our kids mean the world to us. Our husbands, our wives, our significant ones everyone means but when we die we leave them nothing nothing no nest egg nothing but why is that why does no one plan for that is it more important to make sure your child has the nicest clothes for the first day of school so you can take a picture and post it online is that more important than saving and putting money away for expenses when you gone because one thing is, is guaranteed in this life and that's death and when you die your debt doesn't go away. Your funeral is not free. 
These things have to be paid for. So if you can help with that while you're alive, then why not do it? I think personally, a lot of people don't really care. They don't care enough or they don't, they don't think they're going to die or somehow they think death is going to elude them to where they don't have to, they won't leave behind any expenses. I'm not sure, but it's something that we really should look into if we actually care about our loved ones. You don't want to leave your loved one debt. Well, you shouldn't want to leave them debt, you know. If you can't leave them a nest egg because, you know, money is tight and I understand that, you know, I understand poor. Trust me. I understand tight money, all that. But it, it, if you have the ability to put something away, are you doing it? Now, I can't answer that question for you guys, but just think, you know, like, hey, can I put money away so when I die, my family doesn't have to bear the burden of, of my debt? Because if you love them, then that, that should be automatic. Unfortunately, it's not. It's not something that's taught. It's not something that's that's acknowledged. It's kind of something that, that's inconvenient. No one wants to talk about death, right? I had to talk to my son about me dying and him having to, you know, be the man up, be the man of the family. It was it was uncomfortable, but it, it's a reality. We we have to discuss these things because they can happen. You know, I I'm not I'm not young. <laughs> I'm old, so you know I, I just and even me I had to do a better job of it because when I looked at it, I was like, am I leaving my my am I leaving my loved ones enough behind? You know. And it turns out I, I wasn't. I actually wasn't. So I had to I had to do something about that. And, you know. So for me, it's a it's, it's very important. You know, when when you're when you're not left anything from a loved one, it it it's not necessarily a bad thing because some some loved ones don't have anything to leave, but. When you have the opportunity to leave your loved one something and you don't take it, that's where I kind of, you know, kind of question that that love you actually have for your your uh, kids or husband, wife or whoever, because it should be a no brainer. You pay for car insurance, you pay for home insurance, why like you can't pay for life insurance? I don't know, but in, in these times, man. You never know. You could be here one day, gone the next. I can upload this video and y'all never hear from me again. It's just it's just a harsh reality that I understand and I don't sugarcoat. My kids don't really like talking about it. It does make them uncomfortable, but they I feel it's my obligation to let them know one day I won't be here and what happens to them when I'm gone. That I can control. And we all should just. I think as parents. We should all think about that. What are we leaving our children when we die. So. With that being said. I'm going to wrap this one up. It was kind of a downer. Because of the current events. And everything. But. You know. These are things we have to really think about man. Mental illness is a, is a real thing. And a lot of people have mental illness. And they just. They don't know. Or they, they, they downplay it or they completely disregard it. Because it, it could be a pride thing. It could be a, a ignorance thing. But we, we have to address these things. And all of these all of this stuff starts from home. It does. It, it doesn't start at school. It doesn't start at TV, video games. It starts at home with the parents. So when we can we can try our best and Nobody's perfect. Even even if we try, it, it may not always work. But we have to try. We have to try. All right, YouTube, that'll end this podcast, man. I really don't know what I'm going to do in my next podcast. I'm kind of all over the place. You know, it's the summer, so I, you know, will have my children. And it does get hectic, but I'm going to keep giving y'all the content, man. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, like always. Thank y'all for watching, man. Until the next video, be easy.